Right now, as you're watching this, an interstellar object is racing through our inner solar system at 68 kilometers per second, and we can't see what's happening. It's called 3i slash Atlas, the largest interstellar object ever detected. In just days, it'll reach its closest point to the sun, and what happens next could reveal how worlds form in other star systems, or rewrite what we think comets really are. Now, 3. I slash Atlas was first detected in early July 2025 by the Atlas Survey System in Hawaii. Initial observations immediately flagged something unusual. This wasn't behaving like anything we'd seen before. What makes this discovery so remarkable is first, its trajectory. This object is traveling on a hyperbolic orbit, meaning it came from outside our solar system, but it's aligned within just five degrees of our ecliptic plane. That's the flat disk where all our planets orbit. For an interstellar visitor to arrive so precisely aligned is statistically unusual. Second, its speed is extraordinary. When first detected, it was moving at approximately 58 kilometers per second. During perihelion, it will accelerate to 68 kilometers per second. That's about 152,000 miles per hour, or roughly 0.02% the speed of light. That's significantly faster than typical comets originating from our Oort cloud. And third, its size is massive for an interstellar object. Based on brightness measurements and estimated albedo, we're looking at something between 5 and potentially 50 kilometers in diameter. To put that in perspective, that's anywhere from the size of a small mountain to roughly half the width of Paris. The last time we observed an interstellar object of this significance was Oumuamua in 2017, which was much smaller and didn't display any cometary activity. 3. I slash Atlas is in a completely different category. Let's dive into the latest data we have before it disappeared behind the sun's glare. Here we have the orbital diagram from NASA's JPL showing 3I slash Atlas's path through the inner solar system. We see Earth's orbit in blue, Mars in red, and the trajectory of 3i slash Atlas cutting through at that shallow 5-degree inclination. You'll notice right there how it crosses Mars's orbit and continues inward towards the Sun. The perihelion distance has been calculated at approximately 1.36 to 1.4 astronomical units. To put that in perspective, one astronomical unit is the distance from Earth to the Sun, about 150 million kilometers. So 3i slash Atlas will pass at roughly 204 million kilometers from the Sun, placing it between Earth's orbit and Mars's orbit at its closest approach. Now, if we look at the light curve data from the COBS database, we can see something fascinating. This graph shows apparent magnitude on the vertical axis. Remember, lower numbers mean brighter objects, and time on the horizontal axis. We see the first measurements in July at around magnitude 15, which requires a fairly powerful telescope to observe. You'll notice it began brightening steadily as it approached, reaching approximately magnitude 11.5 to 12 before we lost visual contact in early October. That's an increase of about 3 to 4 magnitudes, which means it became roughly 25 to 40 times brighter than when first discovered. This tells us that as it gets closer to the Sun, solar radiation is causing increased outgassing and activity. Here we have spectroscopic analysis showing the composition of 3i slash Atlas's coma. That's the cloud of gas and dust surrounding it. The dominant signature we see is carbon dioxide, shown by these strong emission lines at specific wavelengths. This is unusual because most comets from our solar system show a mix of water ice, carbon dioxide, and other volatiles. 3i slash Atlas appears to be predominantly carbon dioxide, suggesting a different formation environment. What's really interesting is this color change we observed. 
Initial observations showed a reddish hue, which is common for objects from interstellar space due to radiation processing of organic compounds over millions of years. But then, as it became more active, it developed this distinctive green glow. That green color comes from diatomic carbon molecules, C2, being excited by solar ultraviolet radiation. Now, let's examine the polarization data, because this is where things get truly anomalous. This graph shows the degree of polarization versus phase angle. 3i slash Atlas exhibits the most extreme negative polarization curve ever recorded for any astronomical object. Normally, we'd see values in this range, but 3i slash Atlas shows values way down here. This suggests an extremely unusual surface texture or composition that we don't fully understand. Finally, here's the most visually striking anomaly the tail structure. This image shows 3i slash Atlas with its dust tail, but notice the direction. Comet tails always point away from the sun due to solar wind pressure. But 3i slash Atlas has this unusual forward pointing component, almost like it's pushing material ahead of itself. This could be due to the extreme speed at which it's traveling creating a bow shock effect as it plows through the interplanetary medium. The superior conjunction occurred on October 21st, when 3i slash Atlas passed directly behind the Sun from our perspective. During this time, and continuing through perihelion on October 29th, we have absolutely no observational data. We're flying blind. Now, some of you might be wondering, what exactly makes an object interstellar? And how do we know 3i slash Atlas came from outside our solar system? Simply put, it's all about orbital mechanics. Every object orbiting the Sun follows an elliptical path. That's Kepler's first law. The shape of that ellipse is described by something called eccentricity. A perfect circle has an eccentricity of zero, and most planets have eccentricities close to zero. Comets from our Oort cloud have eccentricities less than one, meaning they're on very elongated ellipses but still bound to the Sun. But when an object has an eccentricity greater than one, that's called a hyperbolic orbit. Think of it like throwing a ball straight up. If you don't throw it hard enough, it comes back down. But if you throw it faster than escape velocity, it keeps going forever. That's what we see with 3i slash Atlas. Its orbital eccentricity is approximately 1.02 to 1.05, meaning it's on a hyperbolic trajectory. More technically, we can calculate the object's total energy. That's kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy. For bound orbits, this total energy is negative. For unbound hyperbolic orbits, it's positive. 3i slash Atlas has positive total energy relative to the Sun, confirming its interstellar origin. The speed also tells us this story. At its current distance, an object from our solar system would be traveling much slower. But 3i slash Atlas is moving at 68 kilometers per second at perihelion, which is consistent with an object that entered our solar system with excess velocity from interstellar space. This matters for understanding 3i slash Atlas because it means this object formed around a different star in a different stellar environment, possibly billions of years ago. The composition, structure, and behavior we observe are snapshots of conditions in another part of our galaxy. Every measurement we take is a window into alien chemistry and physics. Not alien life, but alien in the sense of foreign to our solar system. The perihelion passage is critical because that's when solar heating is at maximum. If 3i slash Atlas is going to undergo any dramatic changes, increased outgassing, fragmentation, or unexpected activity, it will happen now. And, frustratingly, we can't watch it happen in real time. What's really fascinating about 3 
I slash Atlas's perihelion timing is the broader context of what's happening in our solar system right now. We're currently at solar maximum, the peak of the sun's 11-year activity cycle. Sunspot numbers are elevated. We're seeing frequent X-class solar flares, and the solar wind is more dynamic than usual. When 3I slash Atlas passes through perihelion, it's not just interacting with solar radiation, it's embedded in this complex electromagnetic environment. The sun generates an electric field that extends throughout the heliosphere, and this field is particularly strong near the sun. Some researchers have proposed that comets and interstellar objects might interact with this electric field in ways we don't fully understand yet. From a plasma physics perspective, 3I slash Atlas is essentially a moving node in the solar system's electromagnetic circuit. It's carrying charge, it's surrounded by ionized gas, and it's traveling at high speed through the sun's magnetic field. This creates what's called a magneto-hydrodynamic interaction. The object's magnetic field interacts with the solar wind's magnetic field, potentially creating bow shocks and wake structures. Some scientists think these electromagnetic interactions are purely passive. The object just responds to solar wind pressure and radiation. Others believe there could be more active coupling, where the object's own electromagnetic properties influence the local space environment. There's also speculation about whether interstellar objects like 3I slash Atlas could affect solar activity. The mainstream view is that an object this small, even 50 kilometers across, is far too tiny to influence the sun in any measurable way. The sun is 1.4 million kilometers in diameter. 3I slash Atlas is like a grain of sand compared to a beach ball. However, some researchers propose that in a highly interconnected electromagnetic system, even small perturbations could have cascading effects. It's similar to how a small pebble can trigger an avalanche if conditions are right. We simply don't have enough data to say definitively either way. I personally think the most interesting aspect is what 3I slash Atlas can teach us about the diversity of objects in our galaxy. Every interstellar visitor is a free sample from another stellar system. We didn't have to send a probe trillions of kilometers. The universe delivered this object to our doorstep. The key takeaway is that 3I slash Atlas represents a unique opportunity to study material from beyond our solar system. Whether or not it influences the Sun or Earth, the scientific value is immense. We're learning about formation conditions around other stars, about how objects survive in interstellar space for potentially millions of years, and about the composition of the interstellar medium itself. The fact that we're blind during its most active period is frustrating from a scientific standpoint but it also adds to the mystery and anticipation of what we'll observe when it emerges from behind the sun in late November. So what's coming up? The perihelion of 3I slash Atlas occurs on October 29th at 11.55 a.m. Universal Time. That's 7.55 a.m. Eastern Time for those of you in the United States. At that moment, it will be approximately 1.36 astronomical units from the sun about 204 million kilometers. During this time, solar heating will be at maximum. If the object is going to fragment, brighten dramatically, or undergo any unexpected changes, this is when it would happen. The increased solar radiation will cause maximum outgassing of volatiles, potentially expanding the coma to even larger dimensions than we've already observed. For those of you hoping to observe 3I slash Atlas, unfortunately, it's not possible right now. The object is too close to the sun's position in our sky, lost in the solar glare. Even with professional telescopes, we can't separate it from the sun's overwhelming brightness. We may start getting observations again in mid to late November, around November 20th to 25th, when 3I slash Atlas will have moved far enough from the sun's position to be observable again. 
At that point, it will be moving outward, heading back toward Mars's orbit and eventually beyond. The closest approach to Earth actually occurs on December 19th, when it will pass at approximately 0.7 astronomical units, about 105 million kilometers away. That's still quite distant, about 273 times farther than the Moon, so there's absolutely no danger but it will be the best opportunity for detailed observations from Earth-based telescopes. Then, on December 21st, we have the December solstice, the shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. Some people have noted the synchronicity of Three Mai slash Atlas's closest approach to Earth coinciding almost exactly with the solstice, though this is likely just coincidence rather than any meaningful connection. After that, 3i slash Atlas will continue outward, crossing Mars's orbit again in early 2026 and eventually leaving the inner solar system entirely. By mid-2026, it will be beyond Jupiter's orbit and fading from view. I'll be monitoring all available data and will post updates as soon as we get new observations in late November. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the follow-up coverage.